Hello and welcome. Today I'm gonna to show you how to make a refreshing cucumber salsa. And if you stick around to the end, I'm gonna show you how to transform the salsa for your tacos. You'll need three cucumbers, one purple onion, four tomatillos, the juice of three key limes, one serrano, five chiltepines, or you can use three chiles de arbol, one fourth cup of water, half a bunch of cilantro, half a tablespoon of salt, and I highly recommend you have this salsa with your Doritos. Let's start by peeling our cucumber and chopping them into smaller pieces. And you wanna make sure that you're chopping your cucumbers into small little bits. You don't want a chunky cucumber, okay? It's not that kind of salsa today. You wanna make sure you're slicing your onion very thin and you're gonna chop it into small, tiny little bits. You're gonna take two of your tomatillos and you're gonna slice them into smaller little bits. The other two will be going into the blender and I'll show you what to do in just a moment. And for those of you that don't have access to tomatillo at the moment, you can use tomatoes. But when you get a chance to get tomatillos, go ahead and use that. You can even use the ones in a can. Perfect for this recipe. Go ahead and place all those ingredients. So what we have in the bowl, we have our cucumbers, two tomatillos, and one medium onion uh, chopped really fine, just like you've used club, and just place it in here. If you don't have purple onion, that's okay. You can use whatever onion you have on hand, but I definitely suggest the purple one because it really enhances the flavor of this recipe. Take your tomatillos and add them to the blender. Your serrano, if you don't want to handle the spice of the serrano, which this one, based on the curve, is pretty much gonna come for you, uh, you can use your jalapeno. Add your water. You can use your desired amount of chiltepines or chiles de arbol. Your cilantro. And I'm using a lot because I think it just tastes great with this recipe. It's really gonna be up to you. I'm using the juice of three key limes, so if you're using the big uh, limes, you can use one or two. And for your lemon, just use one. Your salt. And make sure to be very careful with the way that you're using your salt. You might wanna add uh, one full teaspoon and then taste it and adjust because sometimes if you go really heavy with your salt, uh, it's gonna get way too salty, but especially with this recipe. And as far as the pepper goes, it does enhance the spice and the flavor. So if you don't like spice, do not use pepper in this particular recipe. And now you wanna blend until smooth. That'll be about 30 to 40 seconds. And boom, done. And pour your blended ingredients right on in. Just make sure you combine your ingredients well. This also tastes best fresh or the next day. Hey, I'm not playing. It even tastes good the third day. <laughs> it's so good. It's so refreshing. And now it's time for a taste. And the beautiful thing about this salsa is that you can have as much as you want. Super light, super refreshing. And I do recommend that you have this salsa with Doritos. You can have it with any kind of chips, yes, but when you have it with Doritos, you're gonna know what I'm talking about and please come back and let me know what you think. I doubted you for a second until I had it with Doritos. Well, Cloud, if there's something about snacking, it's your sister's gonna figure it out, okay? <laughs> I, I get my wolfing hour where I have to munch and this is pretty light for me. And I love cucumbers. This is a win. I'm gonna need somebody very special to say ah. Uh. Now, for those of you that would like to transform this salsa for your tacos, you're gonna need some corn. You can roast your corn, you can use frozen corn, canned corn, it doesn't matter. Just get a hold of some corn. And then you just wanna add your corn into your salsa. Give that a good mix, and I'm gonna show you how to assemble a delicious taco. There's something about a natural green that just makes you feel so healthy when you're eating it, right? At least for me, that's the way that's I feel. It's my favorite color, so I like to see it on my plate. Really? I've grown very fond of green here in Colorado, and I, I love it. I don't know, I might be joining you. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely beautiful for a potluck, for your fiestas, for your church potluck competitions. Ooh, you know who I'm talking to. <laughs> you guys have been winning, yeah. I'm so proud of you. Let me know how far you got in your contest. You can take a corn or a flour tortilla and you're gonna place your carne asada right on top of there, okay? 
Which and carne asada recipe is this one? This is a carne asada marinade that I meal prepped for us. Oh, the one this from this weekend? Yeah. Came out so this juicy. is all the rave, this carne asada this weekend. It, it rained, so it took me a few days to get to it. I know I left you hanging the last night. It's okay, it's okay, I, I got it done. Next, you're gonna place your salsa. Sprinkle some cotija cheese. And boom, done. This taco right here is absolutely delicious and I hope you guys try it and that you love it. Please come back and let us know. I'm so excited for this recipe. As always, Cloud and I are wishing you the best. We absolutely adore you. Make sure you stay cool and hydrated this summer. And on that one, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Adios. Crunchy carne asada tacos. You know the ones you get with the soft tortilla? Same thing, but crunchy. Mmm. Hello and welcome back to Views on the Road. I'm your host Steph and today we're gonna make crunchy carne asada tacos. You know the ones you get with the soft tortilla? Same thing, but crunchy. And we're gonna start this marinade by adding two tablespoons of soy sauce to your beef. I know you're looking at me like, Steph, we've already seen this, but some of you haven't. So we're gonna take our time and we're gonna show you how to marinade. Add your garlic, cilantro, the juice of half a lime, one tablespoon of chicken bouillon, half a tablespoon of cumin, half a tablespoon of garlic powder, one teaspoon of chili powder, one teaspoon of black pepper, one teaspoon of paprika, one teaspoon of onion powder, half a teaspoon of ginger powder, and two tablespoons of olive oil. And for those of you that ask about the acrylic spice containers, Claude and I have been using these for a few years. Um, they go really good in my cabinets and they're real easy to clean. We love them and Claude will give you a link in the description area if you wanna purchase them. And now for the fun part, we're gonna start combining our ingredients to make sure that our beef is fully coated. And you will notice that I didn't use beer today, but you're more than welcome to. And once you're done with your beef, you're gonna go ahead and let this marinate for a minimum of 15 minutes. It's always best to leave it overnight or even eight hours, but I will tell you, regardless of how much time you marinate, it's gonna taste delicious. So while this is marinating for us, we're gonna get started on our guacamole. We have three avocados and I'm hoping at least two of these work out for us, so let's test it. They feel soft, they feel ripe. Ooh, we're good. All right, so a lot of you would throw this one away because it has that little speck. And I have humble beginnings, you guys. All you do is cut it off. And boom, done. You left the cabinet open. I mean, the. Door. I don't do it. Look, it does. It gets stuck. Look. <laughs> it's not even my ADHD anymore. Push it real good. Se quedan atorados. We'll say guacamole by these on the road. <laughs> And before I start mashing our guacamole, I like to add the lime first. Prevents oxidation while we're mashing. Just use a fork. Don't you hate when you cut into an avocado and it's not even ripe? It's like, it's hard, but you think that it could possibly make it and it doesn't. Since I don't hate anything or on anyone, I'm gonna say strongly dislike. Okay, <laughs> strongly dislike everyone. But yeah, that's the only exception I'll use. I do hate it. <laughs> <laughs> Sprinkle a little bit of salt, purple onions, and cilantro. Give that a loving mix. And try not to eat this before your tacos are ready. I know some of you are already pulling out the chips and don't do it. There's only a little bit. <laughs> you know, we've been eating avocado toast since, I don't know, the dawn of time in Mexico. Yeah. Um, some guacamole on top of your, your pan tostado, your Ooh. bolillo. <laughs> Ooh, heaven. So when I saw um, avocado toast on the menu for, you know, seven to eight dollars, I was like, no, Forget no, no, Forget no, no. it. There's only one place that I'll pay 10 to 15 dollars for their avocado toast. Oh, I know what you're talking about. I'll have to make it for you guys and tell you where to find it. Our guacamole is ready. Now let's get started on our pico de gallo. In this bowl, I have one tomato. I have a little bit less than one fourth of a white onion. If you want spice, you can add serrano or jalapeno. Don't rub your eyes if you did that. A little bit of cilantro, salt to taste, and the juice of half a lime. And that's a good place to start. You can always adjust to your liking. 
Give that a loving mix and let's go ahead and get started on our carne asada. Place your burner on a medium high heat and allow it to warm up for a minute to a minute and a half. And since we want a good sear for this carne asada, do not move anything for the next three minutes. And while our beef is cooking, we're gonna start warming up our tortillas. And now you wanna start mixing your beef. I'm gonna continue to cook on a medium heat for another four to five minutes. And while that's happening, we're gonna start frying our taco shells. With an uncoated wooden spoon, wooden chopstick, or your toothpicks, you're gonna test your oil. Once you see it bubble up, that means that you're ready to fry. If you see a lot of smoke coming out of your pan, that means that you're going to slow your roll. You're going to wait till your oil cools off a bit and then give it another try. Because if you put your stuff in while it's smoking, you're going to burn your food. Now we're going to start making our taco shells. Dip it into the oil. And you don't need to fry with this much oil. I so happen to always have a pan full of oil. And you guys always see it. <laughs> so that's why I'm using this. And you just want to start folding it like you would a taco shell. I find that when you warm up your tortillas a little bit, it's so much easier to make these because they crisp up a lot faster and they hold that crunch of your corn chips. Kind of like I taught you when uh, we were making our salsa and corn chips. Same thing when you're taco shells. And I'm going to continue making more taco shells with our remaining tortillas. Oh, I'm talking back. It's getting sassy. You must be related to me. <laughs> our taco shells and our carne asada is ready. I have some refried beans and now it's time to assemble our tacos. I have some sexy beans here and I put them in a little Ziploc bag. If you have a little piping bag, you can use that, but this is a lot easier for me. And we're going to fill our tacos that way because it's going to be a lot easier than you making a mess with your spoon. Add your carne asada. And to our guacamole, I place it in a little Ziploc bag. It's going to be easier to pipe right into your taco shells. <laughs> Add a little bit of cheese. But those poor teenagers get no break around here. Poor kids. Be nice to the teenagers, Sweet. you guys. A little sweeter if they're trying to get home. <laughs> and your choice of salsa. You're not going to Taco Bell. You're going to eat out. <laughs> and boom, done. Some delicious, crunchy carne asada tacos for everybody. I know teenagers love crunchy tacos. When I was a teenager, I did too. I liked them all the way up until my 20s, and we'll just leave it at that, okay? So enjoy. Buen provecho. Mmm. You know when tacos are so good they make you want to cry? These are the tacos that are going to make you want to cry. It has everything that you love from your Mexican food in one crispy hard taco shell. So go ahead and look away because it's going to get dangerous. Mmm. As always, Cloud and I are wishing you the best. We absolutely adore you. We've been sitting there responding to your comments. Some of you guys are making us laugh really hard. Some of you make us cry. And some of you make us wonder what the heck is going on with you. But that's okay because we're a beautiful community. And we're always here for each other. And on that one, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Adios. Hello and welcome back to Views on the Road. I'm your host, Steph. And today I'm going to show you how to make perfect pizza dough. And I truly believe you're going to fall in love with this pizza. The center part doesn't fall apart flimsy or soggy. And you get that beautiful bubbling from the pizza crust that we just love. Oh, I'm going to need somebody very special to say ah. Uh... Hello and welcome back to Views on the Road. I'm your host, Steph. And today I'm going to show you how to make perfect pizza dough. You're going to start off with one cup of water. And you want to add that cup of water into your bowl one teaspoon of honey, one teaspoon of yeast. Combine all your ingredients, add one cup of flour. Give that a loving mix until all your ingredients are well combined. 
Once you've combined all your ingredients for your yeast starter, you're gonna allow this to sit on your counter for one hour. After that hour, you're gonna place it into a container that has a lid and you're gonna put it in your refrigerator overnight or up to 24 hours. I've had my dough starter in the refrigerator overnight and let me show you what it looks like. Just some beautiful yeasty dough that's gonna enhance the flavor of our pizza. To your bowl, you're gonna add one and a half cups of water, add your dough starter, and if it happens to smell super yeasty, that's exactly what you want. You did a great job. Give that a loving mix and continue until everything is well combined. Once you combine all your ingredients, you're gonna add half of your portion of flour. For us, that's gonna be two and a half cups of all-purpose flour. Pizza does taste a lot better when you use zero grade flour, but hey, I have a big uh, container of all-purpose and that's exactly what I'm gonna use today. Add one tablespoon of salt and start combining your ingredients. Once you've mixed all your ingredients, you're gonna add the remaining flour. And same thing, start combining all your ingredients. Once you fully coat your dough, you're gonna see that it looks a little crusty on the outer parts, and that's when you wanna dump it on your counter. And you're gonna start mixing with your hands. You're gonna notice that your dough is a bit sticky and that's okay, that means that you're doing a really good job. And I'm gonna continue mixing for another two minutes. You wanna give it a little fold, press it down, roll it, and continue kneading. And after two minutes, you'll notice that your dough just gets super soft and beautiful on its own. So you just wanna shape it up into a nice little round ball like this. You can add a little bit of olive oil to your hands. Make sure to cover all your dough with those olive oil hands so that way nothing dries out. You're gonna place your bowl right over it and you're gonna allow this to set here for about 15 minutes. But since I'm kind of snowed in right now, I'm gonna let this set here for 25 minutes just so it can get nice and warm. Before we start dividing our dough, I'm gonna sprinkle a little bit of semolina flour to the bottom of our baking sheet. And now we're gonna divide our dough right down the middle, just like that. And you wanna start making a nice round pizza dough, just like that. And you just wanna keep it nice, round, and fluffy. And if you can see this dough is so soft, it's already developing the little bubbles that you want. So beautiful. And you're gonna do the same with your other piece. Make it into a nice round pizza dough. Place one right here, and you're gonna place your other piece on the other side. Make sure to keep a good distance. You're gonna lather your hands with a little bit of olive oil. You wanna cover your pizza dough with some plastic wrap. I'm gonna place it in the oven at zero degrees for one whole hour. After one hour, you're gonna take out your Beautiful dough. You're gonna place your oven at the highest temperature that it will go. Mine goes up to uh, 555 degrees Fahrenheit. So just make sure that you blast it. I'm gonna place a little semolina flour on the counter before I place our pizza dough. And now we're gonna start pressing our dough. So nice and fluffy. We're not gonna be using a roller, we're just gonna stretch, okay? Just like that. Hold it there and just pull, hold it and pull. And you wanna stretch it for as big as you want your pizza. If you remember in the beginning, I just cupped it and then I started stretching it. And the reason is because you wanna leave a little bit of the thickness at the center of your pizza so you don't have those pizzas that are falling apart when you uh, slice them. And once you've stretched your pizza as round as you would like, you're gonna use your favorite pizza dish to place it on top. If you have a pizza stone, use a pizza stone, but this one seems to work well in our regular home ovens. 
You can choose your favorite pasta, pizza sauce, or marinara. And lately my family's been enjoying this one and it really saves me some time when I'm making pizza at home. And a little bit of pizza sauce goes a long way. You might be wondering how much is a good amount of sauce to add to your pizza. If you're making a large pizza, I think half a cup and slightly over is a perfect amount to get a perfect pizza at home. You wanna use freshly grated low moisture mozzarella and sprinkle your desired amount over your pizza. Don't get carried away. Cheese is cheese and every single one of you is gonna get some on your slice. And for those of you that want large pepperoni, you're gonna to go to your deli section. For a large size, you can ask them for one fourth of a pound and you're gonna get more than plenty to finish your pizza. And to really enhance the flavor of your pizza at home, you wanna make sure to place some olive oil all across the crust. A lot of you don't like it and this might just change your mind. And now you're gonna bake your pizza for 10 to 13 minutes. If you don't have a round pizza pan, not to worry, you can always use whatever baking dish you have just to mold your pizza in there. Your family is not going to complain. And boom, done. Our pizza's ready. It smells amazing. I don't know who's ready for a nice, delicious bite. And I truly believe you're gonna fall in love with this pizza. The center part doesn't fall apart flimsy or soggy, and you get that beautiful bubbling from the pizza crust that we just love. Oh, I'm gonna need somebody very special to say ah. Uh. And just like that, we have a perfectly made homemade pizza dough and a pizza to go with it. Mm. Absolutely delicious. Mmm. Hello and welcome back to Views on the Road. I'm your host Steph and today we're making nacho cheese. If you've ever had problems with your nacho cheese, this recipe is for you. I'm gonna teach you how to make it silky smooth and make sure to stick around for the end because I'm gonna show you how to make a delicious game day snack. And if you have some smoke coming out of your... You'll need three cups of half and half, three cups of medium cheddar, three cups of white cheddar, one tablespoon of butter, one tablespoon of all-purpose flour, Optional but not necessary, you can add one third of a cup of your jalapeno juice so that you can have that jalapeno flavor in your nacho sauce. Give that a loving mix and let's get started on making our nacho cheese. Place your burner on a medium heat and add your butter. Once you've melted your butter, you're gonna add your all-purpose flour and you're gonna quickly combine your ingredients. Once you combine your ingredients, you wanna make sure to cook an additional 10 to 15 seconds. Next, you're going to add your half and half and combine as you pour. Make sure that everything is well combined while you bring your ingredients to temperature. Once your pot gets really hot and you used your jalapeno juice, you're going to smell that it smells like your um, nacho cheese from the theater. I think you're going to love this one. And now we're ready to add our cheese. We're going to start by adding our white cheddar. When you add your white cheddar, you're going to place your burner on a medium-low heat and start giving it a loving mix. Once you combine your white cheddar, you're going to wait until you see the side of your pan bubbling. That's going to take you another two to three minutes. And this is where you want to add your cheddar cheese. And start mixing until you fully incorporate your cheddar cheese into our delicious white cheese. Ooh, smells so good. <laughs> Once you've combined your cheddar into your sauce, you're going to continue to cook on a medium-low heat. Make sure to come and stir periodically for about three to five minutes. And you'll see that after the three minutes of cooking, uh, you'll start getting more bubbly and you'll start seeing your cheese raise a little bit. And that's when you want to vigorously mix. After the three minutes, I just stayed here mixing because, you know, I love being in the kitchen. I was chatting with my sister, and we have a smooth, perfect cheese. And boom, done. Our nacho cheese is ready. I'm going to set this to the side. I'm going to go and assemble our snack, and when we come back, I'm going to show you what happens when it gets cold. You are going to need as many hot dogs as you want to make. 
And although we've made these here on the channel today, we're going to show you exactly how Mexican street food is made and how addictive it is because these are going to be so good. And for those of you that don't want to use your hot dogs, not to worry. Get a large potato and you're going to slice it into long strips just like this. You're going to take a paper towel and you're going to soak it. You're going to place it over your potatoes and in your microwave for five minutes. While our potatoes are cooking, I'm going to show you our taco glue. You're going to use all-purpose flour and you're going to add water until you develop a paste. I'm starting off with one tablespoon of all-purpose flour and adding a good amount of water. And keep mixing until you develop a nice thick paste. Our potatoes just, <laughs> there it is. Our potatoes just finished steaming in our microwave and I have a pack of tortillas that are a little bit broken and guess what? That's gonna make this recipe even better. So if you have some flimsy tortillas, the ones that keep you know, peeling off in the corners and you're hiding from your family, you wanna use those for this recipe. Está como los cumbia kings. Ooh, fuego. Fuego. <laughs> and your potatoes should be looking like this. Right when they're about to fully cook, you want to take them out. So five minutes is a good time for you guys. <laughs> we keep getting interrupted. Let's, you know what? Let's make these tacos. You're going to line up your tortillas. What works for me to get this process done a lot faster is I give it some space just like that. Just like a good relationship, a good amount of space. Where's our space? <laughs> we don't need you. You and I don't need space, Cloud. You're going to take your taco glue. And some of you are going to say, I don't need that stuff. I'm a pro. You're going to see why you need this in just a moment. And as I'm doing this, I have my oil ready for me. I've been heating it up on a medium, and I better move quickly. If you're feeding a lot of people, you can take your hot dog and slice it down the middle. You make more that way. And you just roll it up. Just like this and set it to the side. And with your thick and juicy potato, you're gonna do the same thing. Roll it up. And I know you probably think, wow, Steph's using some Kirkland fancy hot dogs. Not to worry, any kind of hot dog will work for this. It's just that my sister and I are super sisters and we split our Costco groceries. We sure do. It's a lot of fun. A shout out to all of you that love to live in community. Woo! And this is where the fun begins. Ready? You're going to cut your taquitos into three. And set them to the side. Remember, I said they don't have to be beautiful. Even if they're all falling apart, your tortillas, this is a perfect recipe for that. I'm going to do the same with the rest and I'll meet you at the fryer. With a wooden chopstick or a wooden spoon, you're going to test your oil. Once you see it bubbling, that means that we're ready to fry. And if you have some smoke coming out of your pan, slow your roll. You're going to wait till that temperature cools about 15 to 30 minutes because I really don't know how high you were <laughs> cooking your oil and you're going to have to start over. But we're ready to fry. And you're going to continue to fry until all your taquitos are nice, golden and crispy. Even with my hot sexy oil here, you guys, it took me about six to eight minutes to fry all of these. You want to wait until they're crispy. When you hear it sound like a cardboard, take them out, especially for game day. And what you want to do on your part to perfect this for game day is you want to turn your oven up to 150 to 175 degrees. That's going to keep your taquitos nice and crispy. But if you fried your taquitos and they're a little bit soft and you put them in the oven, don't expect them to crisp up. It's not going to happen. You have to put them in there crispy so they can stay crispy just like your tia. <laughs> your tia, Claude. I'm not saying any other tia. <laughs> I'm not throwing shade at you, Claude. I like to be cold crispy. <laughs> and for added flavor, I like to sprinkle a little bit of salt. Like if it's your french fries, give it a little shake. And I'm going to continue frying up the remaining taquitos. But he lives out of state, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> His virtual lonche. His virtual lonche. <laughs> As you can see, our cheese got nice and cold. It's still smooth, but it's time to heat it up. So you're going to put your burner on a medium-low heat. Okay? Oh, that's the wrong one. 
and you're just going to warm it up again. Unless you're using a crock pot, then you don't have to worry about this step. But if I take the crock pot out right now, I'm going to want to make a roast and... We've been on a roast kick. <laughs> we have. Oh, these potato ones are smelling delicious. Yummy, yummy. <laughs> if you run out of tortillas and you have some of your ingredients left, you just want to fry them right up. You're going to use these to sprinkle over the top. And your cheese should just melt right up and stay nice and smooth. Let me show you. So this means that for those of you that want to make this ahead, you can place it in a Tupperware, put it in your refrigerator, and then warm it right back up when it's go time. And these remaining bits are just the confetti to what we're about to make. And you're going to treat your taquitos just like you would your American nachos. I'm gonna need somebody very special to say ah. Uh. When you try this recipe, you're gonna notice that your nacho cheese is a little bit lighter than you would buy from a can or get at your store. The reason is because we use white and medium cheddar, but let me tell you, it's absolutely delicious and worth going out of the way with your white cheddar cheese. And these are one of those dishes that you should be looking away because once I start, I don't stop. Mmm. I'm one of those moms that games with their kids and this right here, it's super easy. It doesn't interfere with our gaming. I can go in, get it done and continue having fun with my kids. So let me know if you're a gaming mom and what kind of snacks you like to have. Mm. As always, Cloud and I are wishing you the best. We absolutely adore you. We hope you love our nacho cheese and have an amazing game day. And on that one, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Adios. Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to show you how to make the best carne asada marinade you've ever had. Now let's get this recipe on the road. You'll need 5 to 8 pounds of beef. You can use chuck, ribeye, or you can make it comfortable for your home. 1 cup of beer, 1 fourth of a cup of soy sauce, 5 finely chopped garlic cloves, a small bunch of chopped cilantro, 1 tablespoon of apple cider vinegar, or you can use the juice of 1 lime, 2 tablespoons of chicken bouillon, or you can use half a tablespoon of salt. 1 teaspoon of sugar, 1 tablespoon of ground cumin and garlic powder, half a tablespoon of chili powder, black pepper, paprika, onion powder, ground ginger, and 2 tablespoons of olive oil. Let's start off by adding our beer, soy sauce, lime juice, garlic, cilantro, and the remaining seasonings. And now you just want to combine all your ingredients. And now you want to start adding your pieces of beef to your marinade. For best flavor, allow your beef to marinate overnight, but you can get away with marinating it for one hour. Now, pay close attention to what I'm about to tell you next. And every grill master knows that you have to allow your beef to come to room temperature before grilling for the juiciest and best carne asada you've ever had. Once you allow your beef to rest for 10 to 15 minutes, you want to start chopping it up.
I'm gonna need somebody very special to say ah. Uh. Now, who's ready for a big bite? When Provecho, sister, enjoy. Thank you. Mm. Absolutely delicious. As always, Cloud and I are wishing you the best. We absolutely adore you. And on that one, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye-bye. Adios. Hello and welcome. Today I'm gonna to show you how to make a California street food fruit cup. And by the end of this video, you'll know how to make your own fruit cup, your chili paste to go with it, saving you and I a lot of money. Now let's get this recipe on the road. You'll need watermelon, pineapple, melon, cucumbers, mangos, jicama, oranges. For your chili paste, you're gonna need key limes, Valentina hot sauce, tajin, some forritos chilito or miguelito. Salt and your choice of chili powder. Let's start off by peeling our cucumbers. Oh, you're committing an actual sin against the culture right now. Ah, I thought you guys would have noticed. My goodness. <laughs> Whoa, I almost called the elders. <laughs> don't do that. You don't want to do that. Cucumbers are my weakness. Refreshing just like the Views Club. Ooh, Views Club. Your Tia Cloud gave you a compliment today. Really? Someone, someone's happy with you. It's been a year. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, this one's going to be a juicy one. Make sure you give your sweetheart the heart of the watermelon. Well, thank you so much for that. Mmm. Did you pick this watermelon? I sure did. You did wonderful. While well, you were sneaking over there socializing. You know how it is. Mm. Oi, oi. And we're going to continue to prep our delicious fruit. Mmm. That's so juicy. It may not be the heart, but the butt's equally as good. It's so good and it's so sweet. I believe this watermelon I purchased is a chewy watermelon, but if you guys get a hold of the Yosemite watermelons, ooh, those are perfect. If you wanna find real big mangoes, you have to go to your Mexican market. Look at, it's bigger than my hand. Wow. Hello to our friends at Mi Pueblo here in Denver. Saludos amigos in Commerce City. We I love you guys so them. much. Saludos a Ruben in the meat market. He'll hook you up guys <laughs> with the good stuff. And what do I mean by good stuff? Some chilorio from Sinaloa. The good bones. Yep, the good uh, beef bone. All the best that. cuts of meat. The, all that goody goody stuff. Mm -hmm. It gets goody good at butchers. No? No. I mean, 40 year olds don't watch Stranger Things, do they? Um, You're I, I guess I'm chill. <laughs> <laughs> We're kidding, guys. We know 40 year olds are alive and well and young. <laughs> yeah, that's what I did. We watched uh, Stranger Things over the weekend, the boys and I. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, those teenager kids had to be crying. In the Aww. show, I really got into it, you guys. You know I'm emotional. And I really enjoyed this season. But I'm not gonna spoil it for those that haven't seen it. Example me, but I'm gonna watch it before I uh, cancel my membership. I'm gonna be canceling my membership too because this whole thing of raising the prices uh, during certain times, it's not good for a company. I agree. So they didn't have to be rude to us. Unless you guys want to share your login with me. Then. <laughs> Let us know. Send us an email. <laughs> Send us an email. <laughs> and you guys are going to be shocked at what we watch. You guys will get bored quick. Yep. You're going to go straight into nap time when you see our viewing pleasure. And we hope you have a blessed night. <laughs> we do. <laughs> They're going to be like, well, Cloud watched an entire season of Veggie Tales. <laughs> I sure did. She sure does. <laughs>
And all I'm doing is prepping our food. I, if you notice, I'm not slicing our food until it's time to serve. Unless you're meal prepping, then obviously you can just chop it up and, um, and get your containers to go. But when you're serving these fresh like this for your family and have them wait, okay? Have them wait in line while you're uh, prepping your fruit and you're ready to serve breakfast, lunch, or dinner because that's exactly what this is. Nature's candy. These mangoes are so heavy that peeling them right here, I'm like out of breath. So this is not <laughs> toxic candy. This is good candy. This is a good candy. The kids told me that we went viral on a on a candy episode on YouTube. It's oh like, really? Which uh, it has like four million views or something. Which which uh, channel? I'll, I'll link it in the description. Okay, somewhere. it'll be in the description, and hopefully Cloud can pin it or something for you guys. Oh, I'm excited to to see that. <laughs> Why did you tell me before? It slipped my mind until you said candy. You naughty girl. <laughs> Listos. En sus marcas. Fuera. Remember when you're gonna eat your orange to leave some of this uh, little white stuff there because that's gonna help you process your vitamin C. Oh, well, I didn't know that. You know who I learned that from? Mm -hmm. uh, Rafali Christina, oh, nice. such an angel. I love her. I love her too, she's a sweetie. And boom, done. Oh, I love jicama, it smells so fresh. And once you start eating jicama, you'll notice like within a week, if you eat it every day, you'll notice a change in your face and in your skin. That's right. It's kind of like watermelon, it has a lot of water. For our chili sauce, we're gonna start off using equal amounts of chamoy and your favorite hot sauce. We're gonna be using one to two tablespoons of tajin, it's really gonna be up to you. One teaspoon of salt, and one fourth of a cup of your favorite chili powder. Today I have guajillo and a little bit of chile de arbol. the juice of two key limes, optional but not necessary, some sugar. And just keep mixing until all your ingredients are well combined. Oh, my mouth is watering, that smells so good. <laughs> Ooh, so good, so good. And if you don't wanna go through all the sauce making, that's okay, you can just buy this bottle, it's very similar and tastes great. Putting the watermelon on the top is going to entice the kids to get to the bottom. <laughs> and now I'm going to show you the naughtiest, most delicious way that you can prepare this. Start with a little sprinkle of tajin, and then we're going to use, you know it, la marroca. And these are a chili-based tamarind chamoy-ish candy that just pairs well with this delicious fruit cup. Drizzle your chili sauce, your lime juice, a little more tajin on the top, and boom done, who's ready for a taste? Bye, baby. And the wonderful thing about this recipe is that you can use any fruit that you want. Cloud and I needed some coconut, but she forgot it at home. <laughs> Not again, don't throw me under the bus. That's the second time I forget an ingredient at home. Yeah, uh, coconut tastes really good in here. So let us know your favorite fruit combos. And remember, you don't always have to cook something to make breakfast, lunch, or dinner. That's how I feel about fruit. It's nature's candy, and you can have this for breakfast even with the chum wing. Mm. What's your favorite fruit in here, Cloud? The coconut? Just kidding. <laughs> mango. The mango, okay. And watermelon. This one's for you. Thank you. Mmm. The chili sauce is perfect on here. It's sweet, tangy, and delicious with a little bit of a kick. So if you guys decide to make your own fruit cups at home, make sure to tag us on our social media. And we hope you're enjoying your summer as much as we are. Stay cool. As always, Cloud and I are wishing you the best. We absolutely adore you. Remember to stay cool this summer and keep in touch. And on that one, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye! Adios! We're gonna start off by placing our sliced potatoes in the microwave for two minutes. I know, I'm using the microwave again. <laughs> After two minutes, you're gonna take your potatoes and you're gonna place them into your oil. And give or take about six minutes, our potatoes are ready. Bebe, can you sprinkle some salt on those potatoes for us? Wow.
Wonderful. Thank you. For this recipe, you're gonna need two to three cups of your carne asada, a lot of french fries, four to six flour tortillas, three cups of cheese, about one cup of Mexican crema fresca, about one and a half cups of pico de gallo, and your desired amount of creamy guacamole. I'm using large burrito tortillas, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna layer it at the bottom of our baking dish. Place a little bit of crema fresca, mozzarella cheese, next your carne asada, that smells so good, right? Yeah. Woo, who's excited? <laughs> layer your french fries. Add another layer of cheese. I mean, who doesn't love cheese pull in their yeah. casserole? Yeah. Raise your hand if you, or say something if you like cheese. <laughs> I love it. I love it. You, you guys love it? Yeah. All right, then I'm, I'm doing good. Now it's time to seal our casserole. You can fold your tortilla in this way, just like that. Place your oven at 380 degrees and you're gonna bake for 10 to 15 minutes, okay? The first 10 minutes you're gonna bake with a parchment paper or a foil over your baking dish because, you know, flour tortillas will burn quickly. So after the 10 minutes, remove your foil and continue to bake until you get the desired crispiness that you like. Once your California burrito comes out of that oven, you're gonna go ahead and sprinkle some more cheese. Your crema fresca, if you don't have crema fresca, that's okay, you can use some sour cream. And what I like to do sometimes is use half Mexican crema fresca and half sour cream and mix it up. It gives a really good flavor. Your pico de gallo. And your guacamole. Go ahead and add your favorite hot sauce. And right now we're still loving the guacamaya. And that's how you make a California burrito casserole, amigos. Who's ready for a bite? Yeah. <laughs> you guys are? Okay, let's do this. <laughs> yummy, yummy. Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to show you how to make quick and easy crispy carnita quesa tacos. And today I'm going to be using our super easy carnita recipe that is made in an instant pot. I've already defrosted my carnitas and now we're ready to start our quesa tacos. Place your burner on a medium high heat and allow it to heat up for about two to three minutes. If you have a cast iron, even better for this next step. I see smoke coming out of my pan and now it's time to add our carnitas. I'm not gonna add any extra oil because you see the fat? We can see it. That's gonna sear and crisp up our carnitas exactly how we need them. I really do love carnitas for family gatherings, not because I don't wanna give you the best quality of what's out there, Cloud. What I'm saying is it's more affordable for families if you make a big pot of carnitas. And you don't have to worry about me, I'll take them right just like that. <laughs> just like that, perfect. And friends, obviously, this is not a copper pot. These are not traditional carnitas, but ooh, boy, do they taste good. <laughs> and if you don't have an instant pot, not to worry, Cloud made this. Cloud, you made them, okay? We made the recipe for you in a uh, slow cooker. So we'll link those recipes down below. I'm gonna continue to crisp up our carnitas for another six to eight minutes. For this part, you wanna cook with your eyes, okay? Don't think about, it's not gonna be juicy and tender. This is a meal prep. Your whole family's gonna love it, but you need to crisp it up as much as you want, okay? Make it comfortable for your home. See, this one already needs a flip. Ooh, you see this crisp? Yummy. So just move it around, get as many crispy little parts as you want. Well, you don't need to show off and tell us something about how you crisp these up. Huh? <laughs> Cast iron friends at a good heat. Ooh! I don't know, I get happy with carnitas. I start thinking about all the delicious carnitas I've had. <laughs> Shout out to all our friends in Texas. We miss and love you. <laughs> yes, we do. Amigos, I have access to very flimsy tortillas that every time I fry them, they're falling apart. So to avoid that from happening, I'm gonna 
cook them for a little bit, about eight to 10 seconds, give or take. And then I'm just gonna set them to the side and then I'm gonna fill them up. With <clears throat> this, it's distracting me. With this. And, and some, some quesito. This. We found lachona and got there. excited. <laughs> Okay, hey, that's not my stomach, that's the floor. Don't even look at me like that. I want them to. <laughs> you guys, we do live in a very old house, not a mansion, a very old house. Who's we? You live here. I live in a very old house. Before well, they start spreading rumors. Well, I'm trying to get you to live with me, but I don't know if that's ever gonna happen in my Nickel life. Nickel and dance. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe if I move to Poteet, Texas. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> yeah, I always try to show you guys the tortillas that I'm using. And these are the ones I'm using. I like them, they taste good, but I'm having a difficult time with them. That song comes to mind when you see that. <laughs> yeah, if you ever want Mexicans to come out, just play that song really loud anywhere you're at. Like any chance any you get, country, right? Any country, anywhere, just play. <laughs> Do you see how the tortilla is a little bit more dry? Mm -hmm. There's not so much moisture. That's gonna help us get a crispy taquito. I'm definitely gonna eat three today. Yo también voy a hartar. Then I'm gonna walk home. <laughs> <laughs> Are you gonna get on your little scooter? Halfway through. I definitely need to walk it off. I'm also gonna be searing uh, the chiles, hueritos, with some cheese. And I put a little bit of salsa verde in there. All I did was slice it in a little triangle. I removed the seeds with a spoon. And then I add the cheese and a little bit of salsa and that way it stays a little bit more sealed. And this one I broke off so that that way you guys can get a better look. Nice. And these, when you order them at a restaurant or a food truck are called? Uh, chile tronado or chilitos con queso. It depends on who you're talking to and what state you're in, okay? You're all right. You're you all are all right. You are all <laughs> correct. <laughs> in the same pan that you cooked your carnitas and you toasted your tortillas, you're gonna drizzle some oil to cover the bottom of your pan. All right, we're gonna go ahead and place our taquitos. Just like this. Uh -huh. And depending on the tortillas that you're using, uh, it's gonna take you anywhere from two to three minutes, okay? Ooh, did our cheese just melt on this one all beautifully? Ooh, perfect, Ooh, perfect for what we're gonna do. This is what you're gonna do next, ready? You're gonna add as much of your carnitas as you want in there. Close it, and you're gonna set it to the side. I mean, boom, done. What else do you need? Mm, a little bit of salsa. Well, we're not there yet. Hold oh. on a second, guys. Okay, well, you <laughs> asked me, and I'm gonna say it. You know, I just love being in the kitchen with you. It's one of my favorite things to do. I love being in the kitchen with you, friends. I suggest you don't use your fingers, use your little tongs. And I don't mean your tongue to tongue tongue tongue. Um, when you're doing this, this is just because I flipped that many tortillas and tacos and from experience, I used them. The steam is hotter than anything, to be quite honest. There you go. Now I'm going to continue with the remaining tacos. So you're going to have three. My head. Da -dum, da -dum, da -dum. And boom, done amigos, we're ready to serve. And yes, we did trigger our smoke alarm with these cheetahs. And boom, done, amigos, who's ready for a bite? I'm gonna need somebody very special to say, uh. Buen provecho. I'm already looking at it, it looks so pretty that I don't even wanna bite into it. Spoiler alert, they're delicious. They are so good. <laughs> I had half of one, <laughs> but now I'm ready to indulge. I can't even talk, they're so good. How's that chili? Not spicy yet. Not yet. <laughs> they're hit or miss. Sometimes they're gonna be really spicy. 
And some, they're going to be manageable. Yeah, halfway through the bite, you're going to be in trouble. Halfway through the chile. You might be in trouble. Now you know who needs to do all the talking when I'm eating tacos. You. Oh, me? <laughs> well, they're so good. I, I really that. don't talk much when I eat tacos. I just go to town. I love watching you eat. Do we have um, a recipe on the channel for the green salsa? Yes, we do. We have fresh, cooked, roasted salsa. We have a variety, and I'm going to link that in the description area. Came out so good today. Mm. And boom, done. Es que están super fácil y no están muy grasosos. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And friends, I know a lot of you guys are selective eaters out there, but this is a taco that you don't want to skip on. If you love carnitas and you love your quesa tacos, this is perfect. And I think that the tortillas, although I was complaining, they turned out great for this particular recipe, keeping everything very light. So don't eat rice or beans with this particular recipe so you can have more tacos. Just have your agua fresh or just water? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Mmm, so good. I'm always about rotisserie chicken, but I'm definitely about making your carnitas in an instant pot and then forgetting it for a month or so, thawing it out, and then making some quick recipes. It works out perfect. And you surprise yourself every time. I do, but I'm really excited about these tacos. Mmm. Look away. I knew I was going to be kicked out. Uh -huh. <laughs> As always, Cloud and I are wishing you the best. We absolutely adore you. Make sure to subscribe, comment, and like. And if you're interested, I'm going to add a playlist over here. And that's going to allow you to click on it and get about two to three hours of Cloud and I cooking some delicious recipes. And on that one, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Adios. Welcome. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make the most refreshing mango drink to keep you cool this hot season. It is hot fire out there and if you don't believe me, don't go out there. It's really hot, but today I'm going to keep you guys cool and fresh. You'll need five mangos, six cups of water, one fourth of a cup of sugar, or you can use your orange juice concentrate that you can find in the freezer aisle, and a lot of ice. Let's start by chopping our mangos into smaller blendable pieces. To your blender, you want to add your water, mangos, three big spoons of your juice concentrate, and you can use any flavor concentrate you like. I personally like pineapple, and I definitely love it with orange. And you want to blend until smooth. And boom, done! Give that a good mix. And friends, you're gonna find that I did not strain this mango agua fresca. And the reason I didn't is because that should never happen with mango. And it has really good benefits for you. So if you strain it, the benefits from mango that really heal your body will go away. So for this one, I do not ever, ever, unless I wanna impress somebody that wants to chug their agua, I don't ever strain it. Did you just go plug this one? Well. Yeah. Thanks for calling me out, Cloud. You're welcome. <laughs> I'm gonna need somebody very special to say ah. Uh... Buen provecho, enjoy. Thank you. Before I get started with my taste test, I do want to share with you that you don't have to use that much ice. I like to use a lot of ice because that first drink that you get is gonna be really cold and anything that gets diluted turns into um, infused water and the kids can just keep drinking it all day long. I don't know what's more exciting to take a drink or hearing that ice that's gonna cool me completely. <laughs> we both stay cool Thanks. and stay hydrated. Oh, that's cold. That's delicious. It's slight, refreshing, and smooth. If you guys make this drink, make sure to tag us. Let us know what you thought. 
and I have a feeling you're gonna love this as much as we love you. As always, Cloud and I are wishing you the best. We absolutely adore you, and on that one, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Adios. I think you guys have a winner. Come back and let me know what you think. Yummy. Mmm. Hello and welcome. Today I'm gonna to show you how to make a macaroni pasta salad. So if you love bacon and you love ranch, you're gonna absolutely love this recipe. And guess what? This is not just great for your cookouts, it's perfect for the hot season. Now let's get this recipe on the road. Let's start by cooking our pasta and allowing it to cool before we add it to our salad. To your bowl, you wanna add 3 fourths of a cup of ranch, 3 fourths of a cup of mayonnaise, two finely chopped chipotle pods, one teaspoon of salt, onion, and black pepper. I used a rotisserie chicken for this recipe, and you'll notice that at the bottom of your rotisserie chicken, you're gonna see all the delicious chicken broth. Go ahead and add that to this combination. If you don't have access to this, go ahead and add one teaspoon of chicken bouillon. And now you just wanna combine all your ingredients. Once you've combined all your sauce ingredients, you wanna add two to three cups of shredded chicken, eight pieces of cooked bacon, one large shredded carrot, one small chopped green bell pepper, one small chopped red bell pepper, one fourth of a purple onion, one to two cups of corn, one chopped green onion and a small bunch of cilantro, and last but not least, your pasta. And here's my tip to you. Sometimes, you guys might find me that even when I have a big bowl, I can't combine all the ingredients that I need. So I suggest that you get the biggest pot that you have, make sure that it's a cold pot, it's not hot, and go ahead and combine your ingredients in there. And now it's time to give it a good mix. I guess this turned out to be a one pot meal. I'm gonna need somebody very special to say, uh... Hold on before you get started. Our friends wanted to know what I say to you before you take your first bite. Okay. And it's buen Provecho. It's like bon appetit. Or enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> Friends, before I take my bite, I also want to share with you that I'm going to be giving you suggestions in case you're taking this to a cookout and you need to pre-make this. Um, and a few other tips that I'm going to share with you in the description area. Don't be scared. It says tips with an exclamation and then you can go through those and see if it's helpful to you. Buen provecho. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Mmm. I had to move the camera up because your chungle was cropping the, the shot. Oh really? <laughs> you got jokes today? <laughs> She's still out of you guys. This recipe is absolutely delicious. You get a good bite. So if you guys decide it's not a side dish, you can make this as your main course and boom, done. This is just beautiful. I think you guys have a winner. Come back and let me know what you think. Yummy. Mm. As always, Cloud and I are wishing you the best. We absolutely adore you and we have a special message for our View Spa Juniors. We love you guys, so this season, make sure to keep your dogs indoor, look out for them. Even if you have that one person babysitting one of the dogs in the room, cuddling them, just make sure to take care of your pets, friends. And on that one, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye, adios. Hello and welcome back to Views on the Road. I'm your host, Steph, and today I'm making barbacoa two ways. Whether you have one hour or eight, not to worry, I have you covered. And guess what, taco lovers? Not only am I gonna save you time, I'm gonna save you a lot of money. Now let's go over the ingredients. For this delicious barbacoa, you're gonna need four pounds of chuck roast, two cups of water, four guajillo chiles, three ancho chiles, three chipotle chiles, half a large onion, one tomato, five garlic cloves, five bay leaves, three tablespoons of apple cider vinegar, three tablespoons of pork fat, one tablespoon of salt or two and a half tablespoons of chicken bouillon, half a tablespoon of ground cumin, half a tablespoon of Mexican oregano, five pieces of allspice, also known as pimienta gorda, half a teaspoon of ground clove, optional but not necessary, some avocado leaves. See, and it's that easy once you warm up your ancho chile, to remove the stems and the seeds. And I'm gonna continue removing the stems and the seeds to the remaining chiles. And I just wanna say, for those of you that don't have access to uh, dried chipotles like this, that's okay, you can use canned chipotle and adobo sauce. I'm also gonna be soaking our tomatoes with our chiles. Go ahead and add your hot water. If you don't wanna use this method, you can place it on your stovetop with some hot water and boil for 10 to 15 minutes. 
Once your chilas are nice and soft, you're gonna place them in your blender along with your tomato and one and a half cups of your chili water. You're also gonna add your seasonings, which are chicken bouillon, Mexican oregano, ground cumin, allspice, and clove. Onion, garlic, bay leaves, and your apple cider vinegar. Next, we're gonna go ahead and blend until smooth. And boom, done, now it's time to cook our sauce. Place your burner on a medium heat and you wanna add your three tablespoons of your pork fat. If you don't wanna use pork fat, that's okay. You can use some oil, you can use some shortening, but for the best flavor, you wanna use pork fat. After about 30 seconds, your lard is nice and hot and you wanna add your sauce. Give that a loving mix and continue to cook on a medium low heat for another eight to 10 minutes. You might be asking yourself, Steph, why do we have to cook this sauce? And I'm gonna tell you, this is barbacoa. You wanna remove some of that excess moisture so that we're not making birria, okay? It's not birria today, it's barbacoa. And that takes you anywhere from eight to 10 minutes. So hang tight and I'll show you what our sauce will look like. So that way when you're at home, you know exactly what to look for. Give or take eight to 10 minutes, you're gonna notice that the color in your sauce has changed slightly and everything is well cooked exactly how we want. What you wanna do at this moment is you wanna taste your sauce. If you're gonna be adjusting your salt, this would be the time for you to do it. So that's where you have to make it comfortable for your home corazón. So go ahead and turn your pot off and now it's time to marinate our beef. Make sure that we coat all of our beef and this amount of marinade is perfect for four to eight pounds of beef. You can use any kind of fatty beef that you like. You can use cheek. You can even use this for your ribs, ribeye, you name it. It's going to be good for all of those. Once you've fully coated your beef, you're going to go ahead and allow this to marinate for a minimum of four hours. If you want best flavor, the one that you're going to impress everybody with, allow this to marinate overnight. For those using this delicious recipe for your slow cooker, allow this to marinate for four hours, then place in your slow cooker and cook on low for eight hours. And that's pretty much gonna marinate it for you and keep all the flavors that we love from barbacoa. Everybody else, marinate overnight. It's been about four hours and I'm gonna use our Instant Pot Aura Pro, which is also like a crock pot, a slow cooker. I'm gonna place a few cabbage leaves at the bottom of our slow cooker. And that's only because I don't have fresh avocado leaves. I don't have banana leaves. I don't have all that deliciousness. So this is gonna um, help enhance the brothiness we get from our barbacoa at the end. For those of you that got a hold of fresh avocado leaves, bless your heart, I don't have access to them. So I bought these uh, dried ones, which are also gonna enhance the flavor. When you smell this, you're gonna say, that smells familiar. It smells like a yerberia. It smells so, so good. Another uh, option that you have to enhance the flavor of this barbacoa. I'm gonna place two pieces of beef bone at the bottom, which is something I tend to do. You guys are familiar with what I do with the birria. And then you're gonna place your pieces of barbacoa right on the top. My home is a bit cold right now, so the room temperature is colder and I was able to keep my marinade out for the four hours. Now, if you guys are in a very arid place or hot, you don't wanna do that because it's gonna spoil um, your barbacoa. Place your lid over the top, and now you wanna slow cook for eight hours. I left this to cook overnight, and what I did when I came down to get my coffee, all I did was press keep warm. It'll keep it warm for two hours, and my two hours just expired. But if you see that the meat looks picked at, don't make fun of me, I had uh, some tacos for breakfast. <laughs> but go ahead and take a peek. And your barbacoa is tender to the touch, and what I mean by that is just a little squeeze like this will start shredding it for you. So no need to take it out and shred. It falls apart on its own, just as barbacoa should. And I wanna let you know that if you serve your barbacoa this way, you don't have to worry about it. Everything is tender and juicy, but for the effect and the look, you definitely can pour a little bit of that broth over. And boom done, a delicious barbacoa enchilada. That doesn't mean spicy, it just means it's packed with flavor. Before we start adding our barbacoa into our Instant Pot, you can either go with saute or keep warm. I like saute because it heats up the metal part a lot faster so that when we pressure cook, it doesn't have to wait for everything to get warm. What distinguishes your barbacoa from your birria is that 
Barbacoa is steamed. Think of your ribs. They're not boiled in broth, just like we did in our um, slow cooker. It's steamed. So it's the part of the beef that gets steamed from all that heat that rises. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place our beef bones at the bottom for flavor and also so that we can have a little spot for our beef to rest. And to enhance the flavor of our drip beans and the broth that comes out from our beef, I'm gonna use a little bit of cabbage. You can use, like I mentioned earlier, avocado leaves, uh, maguey, you can even use a uh, banana leaf, but I don't have those with me right now, so this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna make it comfortable for our home. I placed our marinade overnight in the refrigerator, and now we're gonna add it into our Instant Pot. Make sure to squeeze out all that delicious sauce. All my Instant Pot lovers, you are in for quite a treat today. I'm gonna add 3 fourths of a cup of water here on the side so that it goes all the way to the bottom. And this style of barbacoa does taste best with pineapple vinegar. Uh, you can use apple cider. Uh, for me, for that added flavor that I love, I'm going to add a little bit right here towards the top. You can include it in your marinade, or you can do it just like I'm doing right now. Oh, I'm so excited. Lastly, I'm going to add our avocado leaves just over the top. So go ahead and close your Instant Pot. Seal the deal. Now we're gonna cancel the saute or the keep warm, whatever you chose. Next, you wanna pressure cook for one hour and allow for a slow pressure release. For those of you that are new to using an Instant Pot or even our old timers, when you're placing your cabbage or your bones, make sure you can chop them up into bigger pieces just to be on the safe side, but there has to be enough space in there to allow the steam to rise up and tenderize your pieces of beef for your barbacoa. And remember, if you slice your beef pieces a lot smaller than this, it's gonna be even more tender and fall apart, just like your slow cooker. And if you're gonna ask me which one I like best, I'm gonna say go with the slow cooker because it gives you more of the real barbacoa taste um, that I remember. What about you, Cloud? Slow cooker. Slow cooker. I'm gonna start off with two tacos because I already had two for breakfast. Don't look at me like that, Beast Club. Once you try it, you're gonna understand. All right, Steph was right. But they don't really judge us because they're just like us. I know. <laughs> it's for the tias that are watching with you guys. Ya sé que me están juzgando. Oren por mí. Las queremos, tias. Sí, las queremos. What I've said is just pray for me instead. <laughs> and you know what I'm noticing? That when people are serving their tacos, they're not packing them. And guess what? Pack your tacos. Don't forget where you come from. Pack your tacos and your tamales. Sprinkling of cilantro and onions your favorite green salsa. And I don't know if it's just me or if you guys do the same thing, I always sprinkle a little bit of salt on the top. Oh my gosh, girl. <laughs> <laughs> little rabanitos for you and your lime. Just perfect. Absolutely delicious. Who's ready for a bite? I am. I'm gonna need somebody very special to say a uh, Buen provecho. You're warned, look away. <laughs> I think I can get this down in like two bites. I know you're so proud of this barbacoa because you greet me with food but never at the door. She mm. had a plate for me at the door. I'm so thankful. <laughs> mm. Mm. Amazing. Mm. Well, let's wash it down with some limonada. Some Mexican limonada. This is absolutely delicious. If your partner doesn't propose to you after this, and if you're already married, they're gonna propose to you again. This is absolutely delicious. And you know what? Times have changed. We don't have a pit in our backyard. And that doesn't mean that you can't eat pretty close to authentic barbacoa tacos. Ahí va. Mm. This barbacoa healed something inside of me and I know a lot of you out there had your rent raised, not to worry. You have my permission to sell this recipe. Just make sure to say a prayer and light a candle for every single Mexican person that's been involved in teaching us how to make such delicious Mexican food. This is one for the books. I hope you guys enjoy it as much as I do. Now look away, I mean it. <laughs> as always, Cloud and I are wishing you the best. We absolutely adore you. We hope this recipe works for you during the holidays or any time out of the week. And some of my ladies there, I hope you're able to get your nails done again. And on that one, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Adios.
Hello and welcome back to Views on the Road. I'm your host Steph and today we're going to be making chubby little snacks that everyone should learn how to make. And if you stick around towards the end, I'm going to show you how to prepare these for game day. A mini chubby snack and a regular <laughs> size one. You'll need three cups of maseca, two to three cups of water, one teaspoon of salt, one and a half tablespoons of taco seasoning, one pound of ground beef, and some oil for frying. To your bowl, you want to add your maseca, salt, give that a quick mix. And you want to start by adding two cups of water. And you want to start combining all your ingredients. I've combined our ingredients and as you can see there's still some dryness. So what you want to do is add half a cup more of water and you're going to adjust gradually. It's going to depend a lot on your climate so you just want to combine as you go. As you can see there's just a tad bit of dryness at the bottom, hardly anything. And I don't want to go over on my water so I'm gonna start adding one tablespoon at a time I know that seems tedious but it's definitely worth it that's gonna prevent you from ruining your masa two and a half cups of water plus two tablespoons is what's gonna work for me let me know how it went for you and what climate you're in so once you have hydrated all your masa to how you like it you want to mix it for a good 30 seconds doesn't require that much once you fully mix your ingredients, you wanna bring it up and make a nice little ball. And place it back in your bowl, cover it with a plate, and you're gonna let this set for 10 to 15 minutes just so that our dough can get nice and hydrated and it's gonna be ready for what we need. And in the meantime, we're gonna get started on cooking our ground beef. Place your burner on a medium high heat and drizzle some oil. I'm using olive oil today and you're gonna need about one tablespoon. Next, you're gonna add your ground beef and you're gonna use your favorite taco seasoning. Kinders, you rock. Start breaking down your ground beef, give it a loving mix, and you're gonna continue to cook until you see no pink in your pan. And boom, done, give or take eight to 10 minutes, your ground beef is exactly where it needs to be. And I'm just gonna start moving some things around so when it's time to fry our little chubby snacks, it's a lot easier for me. I'm gonna place my burner on a medium low heat to start warming up our oil, and that's gonna make it a lot easier when it's time for us to fry our gorditas. And I'm about to show you a trick that I've been doing to make these gorditas go by a lot faster and look even more perfect than ever. So you're gonna need two parchment papers, and you're gonna place one down. Sprinkle a little bit more maseca. You're gonna start pressing your masa down, okay? Just like this. Sprinkle a little bit more maseca on the top. And that's just to prevent extra sticking. You place your parchment paper on the top and you're gonna start rolling. I'm gonna smooth it out with my hand You can take whatever cookie cutter you like, or you can use a cup like I do, and you're gonna place it right into your corn flour. And there you go, you have a little chubby snack for your gorditas. And this is the size you wanna go with if you're having a sports or a gaming night. Um, but if you're gonna be using these as a regular dinner, how you traditionally have them, let me show you how big you want them. And of course, I'm gonna use my Asian bowl <laughs> to make them a lot bigger. And you're just gonna come in. And see, you get them a little bit larger. Just perfect, so. It's gonna be up to you on the size that you want, but what you wanna do next is fry them right up. And since this dough is so easy, guess what? You just mold your dough right up again and continue making your gorditas, your chubby little fried snacks. With an uncoated wooden spoon, wooden chopstick, or your toothpicks, you're gonna test your oil. And once you see it bubbling, that means that you're ready to fry. If you have smoke coming out of your pan, you better slow your roll. Place that on low and you might have to wait 20 to 30 minutes until it cools off again and you give it another go. Place your chubby little snack gently into your oil. 
and keep frying for two and a half to three minutes. And while this one cools for about 15 seconds, I'm gonna start placing the remaining gorditas into our hot oil. And the same thing, fry two and a half to three minutes and you'll see them float right to the top when they're almost ready. You're gonna take a sharp knife and you're gonna start slicing right down the middle. This does work best with a plastic knife, but I don't have one. So once you're done doing this, you're gonna get a little bit of the masa and you're gonna wipe it with your cloth or your paper towel. Beautiful, beautiful gordita. Once you place your knife all the way in like this, just bring it across. Don't pull it out just yet because then it's not gonna work out for you. When you're here, you're gonna use your towel to apply pressure and then you're gonna pull it. Be careful not to cut yourself. Right when you're on your last batch of frying your gorditas, you wanna turn your burners on. If you have ground beef, beans, rice, just put them on a low so everything can be nice and warm when it's time to fill and serve. To your gordita, you're gonna add some refried beans. They can be black or pinto beans. Add your ground beef. For those of you that wanna make the gorditas for your sporting events or your game night, you can place your oven at 150 degrees. Assemble your gorditas with the refried beans and the ground beef. Place them into the oven until you're ready to serve. It's not going to over dry them. They're just going to stay nice and warm like you would get at a concession stand. Next, you're going to add your lettuce. And there's something about finely shredded cheddar that makes me so happy when it's laid right on top of some iceberg lettuce. Add your favorite salsa. Crema fresca. And boom, done. I'm gonna need somebody very special to say ah. Uh. I really love the tiny ones. It makes my babies feel special. And these are easy to pack for you. If you have little ones going to school, a little medallion is gonna make them happy at lunchtime. Love you, Views Club Junior. You two parents and adults. All you responsible adults. You guys make me so happy and I pray for you every single day. So here you have it. A mini chubby snack and a regular size one. It's going to be up to you on how you want to make them, but let me tell you, they are addictive and delicious. And since I love these snacks at any time, it's time for you guys to look away because once I start eating these, I don't stop. Mmm. <laughs> As always, Claude and I are wishing you the best. We absolutely adore you. And on that one, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Adios. Hello and welcome back to Views on the Road. I'm your host, Steph. And today we're going to make a Chinese takeout inspired Mexican fried rice. And most of our families always have some Mexican rice left over. So you're going to need about three to four cups. One cup of peas. Two carrots. One cup of corn. Two eggs. One roasted Anaheim pepper. One green onion half an onion, four garlic cloves, oil, one third of a cup of chicken broth, half a tablespoon of Maggi seasoning, one teaspoon of Mexican oregano, give that a loving mix, and some chicken. You're gonna start by adding half a teaspoon of pepper to your chicken, one teaspoon of garlic powder, one teaspoon of onion powder, one teaspoon of baking soda, one tablespoon of cornstarch. Give that a good mix until all your chicken is coated with your seasonings. Once you coat all your chicken, you're gonna add one tablespoon of soy sauce, and you're gonna give it another loving mix. Once your chicken is fully coated with seasonings, you're gonna go ahead and let it set there for 10 to 15 minutes. And look at that delicious juicy chicken. Place your burner on a medium high heat and drizzle about one tablespoon of oil. Give that about 30 seconds to warm up. We want our oil to be nice and hot before we add our eggs. And in the meantime, you wanna make sure to start beating your eggs. And just keep mixing. We do not want our eggs to burn. And surprisingly, when you add enough oil and you cook these quickly, your house is not gonna smell like burnt eggs and I'm okay with that. Once your eggs are cooked, you're gonna place them onto another plate. 
And since you don't want any burn egg smell to your rice, you want to clean it immediately. And we're back. Add another tablespoon of oil and allow it to warm up for 30 to 45 seconds. And special shout out to my sister. You know, I've moved a lot of times. I've gone through a lot just like anybody else, but I didn't have my walk and my sister was nice enough to give me one of these over the holiday. So I'm happy to be walking it out again. Thanks, Cub. You're welcome. I've been known to buy walks for those that I love. Oh, you're such a sweetie. <laughs> and we love you for it. Once your oil is nice and hot, you're going to add your chicken. You want to give that a loving mix and continue till your chicken is fully cooked. That shouldn't take you more than about two minutes. We're working with tenderloin and that cooks super easy. So if you have chicken breast, it's about the same. And once your chicken is cooked, the same thing. You're going to place it on the same plate as your eggs. And look at that delicious, juicy chicken. Cloud already took a piece, so you guys are going to have to wait to the taste test. I cleaned up my wok, and I'm going to add a little bit more oil and bring it up to temperature. If you guys decide to buy this wok, I love it because it comes with a little loofah that makes it easy for you to scrub any little sticky things to your wok. Once you bring your wok up to temperature again, you're going to add your onions, carrots, And you want to cook them for about 30 seconds. After 30 seconds, you're going to add your garlic. Mix that up beautifully just like you've used club. Next, you're going to add your beautiful corn peas. And remember, if your family doesn't like any of these veggies, you can keep them out and make it comfortable for your home. Your roasted Anaheim pepper. And there's a little bit more oil because we're going to be adding our rice. Give that a loving mix. Once you combine your ingredients, you're gonna add your chicken and your egg. And this is where I like to start breaking down the egg. Keeps it nice and fun in the kitchen for me. Once you've combined all your ingredients, you're gonna add your chicken broth mixture. And boom, done, our rice is ready. So you wanna go ahead and turn off your burner. You're gonna add your green onion and a sprinkle of cilantro. And my kids are just like anybody else's. If it doesn't look like the restaurant style, they don't wanna eat it. And since we're not ordering out at the moment, these little takeout containers are just perfect. Just make sure not to microwave them because they do have a little metal unless you have the different ones. But this portion is just perfect to make it super special for them for a snack or for a little quick meal. And they're perfect to pack for the kids for lunch, for your husband or for yourself if you're running errands. And I hope you enjoy my take on Chinese takeout with a Mexican flair. I'm going to need somebody very special to say uh... And I hope you like this recipe as much as my family does. This is a recipe we say in Spanish, sacapuros. It gets you out of a bind when you're rushing or you don't have that much time to cook. This will get the job done. Mm, absolutely delicious. I hope you have a fun and relaxing weekend. I'm going to miss you, but I'll see you guys very, very soon. Look away. Walk it out. <laughs> As always, Cloud and I are wishing you the best. We absolutely adore you. We hope that you love our creation today. And on that one, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Adios. Hello and welcome back to Views on the Road. I'm your host, Steph, and today we're making pot roast. It's cold outside and a lot of you just want to snuggle in bed and warm your little hearts up. And this is a perfect recipe for you. And you already know, we're going to give it a Steph twist. We're going to start by seasoning our beef. You're going to start adding your salt black pepper, garlic powder, onion powder, I'm going to sprinkle some flour, then you're going to turn it over and we're going to do the same thing and leave it to me to use the smallest plate and you just want to make sure that all sides of your beef is coated with your seasoning. And while you're coating your beef with your seasoning, you want to place your burner on a medium high heat. I'm going to be using cast iron, so that's going to warm up in about two to three minutes. You're going to add about two to three tablespoons of olive oil. If you don't have olive oil, that's okay. Use whatever oil you're comfortable with and you have access to. And now I'm just going to let the olive oil get nice and hot for about another minute, minute and a half. And now it's time to sear our beef. So go ahead and carefully place your beef in your pan 
and you're gonna sear for about eight to 10 minutes. You wanna move your beef every four minutes and make sure that all of the sides are seared. You're gonna add one cup of water. And if you have chicken or beef broth, you can use that, chicken bouillon. And now that I have space on my pan, I'm gonna go ahead and cook our onions until they're translucent and that's gonna be about four minutes. And don't forget that when you're searing or cooking, just clean as you go because once the oil sticks, it's a nightmare to get off. And now you're gonna place your onions into your slow cooker. And on this plate, I have tomato, poblano, and carrots. Your potatoes. And for me, a combination of tomatoes and tomato sauce always does the trick, so you're gonna add one can of tomato sauce. And I'm gonna add a little bit of water just so that all that tomato sauce can go straight to the bottom. Now you're gonna slow cook. I like to press warm so that way when I come down in the morning with my coffee, I get to pick at this delicious soft and tender beef. If you're like me, let me know in the comments and I'll see you when it's ready. And boom, done. Our beef is nice, tender, and fall apart. Look at that. As you can see, I already picked at it. Our potatoes are nice and soft and so are the carrots. Just beautiful. And even the parts with the fat just fall apart. Look at that. Beautiful, beautiful. And we're gonna be preparing our pot roast with a delicious oregano rice. You can't go wrong with it. So you're gonna go ahead and place your burner on a medium heat and you're gonna add about one tablespoon of oil. Today I'm using olive oil. I've been on an olive oil kick. Let me know if you guys have been doing the same. You're gonna add your rice. Give that a loving mix and continue cooking until it's nice and toasty. That should take you about three minutes or so. Once you toast your rice, you want to add your water. Make sure you're following the directions on your package, but if you're in a humid area, you want to use a little bit less than suggested. Your salt. Mexican oregano. Squeeze the juice of half a lime or lemon. Give your rice a loving mix. And you're going to bring up to a boil. Once your pot hits a boil, you're going to lower your temperature to a simmer and continue cooking as suggested on your package. And boom, done. Our rice is nice and fluffy, fully cooked, and you just wanna give it a quick mix. That way your Mexican oregano gets in touch with all the grains of rice. And although this pot roast tastes delicious as is, I like to add a few ingredients that really bring out the flavor even more. Sprinkle a little bit of cilantro, fresh onions, your choice of salsa, a little bit of lime juice, and a little bit of avocado. I'm gonna need somebody very special to say ah. Uh... And this is a perfect recipe for those of you that just wanna enjoy your time off. You can set it on a Friday and then you can eat this throughout the weekend and you don't have anything to worry about. You can alternate it between burritos, tostadas, and you can even place it over your mashed potatoes because I know that a lot of you like it, but try it with the rice first and then let me know. Buen provecho. Thank you. Mmm. Ooh, what is that? Some tea. Mmm. It's not sweet, but it's delicious. And don't forget to eat your veggies. Mmm. Mm. The warmth of this pot roast and the flavors are so comforting to me. I hope that you guys love it as much as I do. Mmm. As always, Cloud and I are wishing you the best. We absolutely adore you. We hope you enjoyed our pot roast today. And on that one, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Adios. Um, but why don't you tell them about your boyfriend? Hello and welcome back to Views on the Road. I'm your host, Steph, and today I'm gonna show you how to make the ultimate California tacos that everyone should try at least once. And don't skip too far ahead because I'm gonna be showing you how to transform your chiles in escabeche. You'll need marinated carne asada, small flour tortillas, french fries, Mexican cheese blend, guacamole, salsa roja, pico de gallo, 
and crema fresca. And if you need a recipe for any of the ingredients that I just showed you, I'm gonna link it down below in the description area. Now for your chiles and escabeche, which are your pickled jalapeños, all I did was remove the seeds, I add a little bit of queso fresco, some of the carrots that are pickled, and I leave it just like this. And right here at the end, I'm gonna show you how to spice it up. I have my burner on a medium heat and I'm gonna add our marinated carne asada and I'm gonna cook it until it's not raw. And while our carne asada is cooking, I'm gonna get started on our french fries. Uh, your nails are looking a little rough, sweetie. What's going on? Well, it's too expensive to get them done. That's crazy. I, I'm giving myself a little money over the weekend. Bear with me, you guys. Single mom life. I know how it goes. I do know. Oh boy, do you know, Cloud. That's when my bangs are all messed up. <laughs> I broke your shears, I need new ones. <laughs> and boom, done. Give or take eight to 10 minutes, your carne asada on your stove is done. Okay, so I went home yesterday and then I see this is the last of tortillas we're making on the channel. What in the world? What do you well, mean? It's, I've just been making a lot of tortillas and they've already seen me do that. It's time for everybody to see like all the fun stuff that I haven't shown, you know? But there's different variations of tortillas. Uh, unless the Views Club Junior asked me, I probably won't ever make the flour tortillas on the channel again. Um, but why don't you tell them about your boyfriend? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you're calling me out on it. Might as well tell everybody about your boyfriend. That is my grown woman business. <laughs> and you're pouring the salt. <laughs> Thanks. You're welcome. Thanks, sis. Ignore us, guys. Just sisters. Uh, calling each other out. <laughs> my man is so fine, girl. <laughs> he is very handsome. My and future cuñado. Very sweet. I like how he cares about you, you know? Nobody really cared about us in the snow except for, like, I was... Uh, I was shoveling snow all by myself <gasps> and then my boys play in the snow and I see these grown men shoveling their own snow, uh, hanging out like out there doing their manly thing. Mm -hmm. You think any of them asked me? No, except for like this older man that just had a uh, shoulder surgery. He kept me company like 30 minutes while I shoveled snow. Oh, our bro from Zacatecas? Yeah, from Zacatecas. Make sure you salt your fries as soon as they come out. And now that we're done cooking here, let me show you what I'm going to do with those chilitos. You guys are going to love it. I'm in love with the Chihuahua cheese. You're gonna take whatever melty cheese you have and you're gonna place it on your pan and let it warm up. You're gonna take a little bit of lime and you're gonna sprinkle it over. And this that we're making in Spanish is called a costa. I don't wanna say it in English, but you can tell somebody in the comments because it just sounds gross. You place your chile. And start flipping it and roll it up and mark it with a B and put it in the oven for the views of that meat and boom done you have your chilito for your tacos with your chilito and boom done. Who's ready for a bite? I'm gonna need somebody very special to say uh, Even those of you that are on a dieta deserve a cheat day. So I hope that you choose your California taco. Buen provecho. Mm. And if you can't have the taco, make yourself a keto chilito. Absolutely delicious. You guys know that I get dangerous when I eat tacos, so go ahead and look away. As always, Cloud and I are wishing you the best. We absolutely adore you. I want to take the time to thank each and every one of our viewers in California. We're aware of what you're going through. We want you to know that you're strong, resilient, and brave. Cloud and I are praying for you guys, and we got this. And on that one, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Adios. Hello and welcome back to Views on the Road. I'm your host, Steph, and today we're making chicken stew. If you love tinga and you love stew, this recipe's for you. And it's super easy to meal prep this recipe for your loved ones. I hope you guys enjoy. To your chicken, you're gonna add cumin, black pepper, salt, oil of your choice. Today I'm using olive oil, minced garlic, and you wanna fully combine all your ingredients. Make sure that your seasonings coat every last piece of chicken. 
Next, you wanna add your baking soda and your cornstarch. And again, we're gonna combine all our ingredients to make sure every last piece is coated. And once you fully combine all your ingredients, you're gonna set this to the side for a minimum of 10 minutes. I pre-soaked my Wajillo chilies in some warm water for about 10 minutes. I removed the stems and the seeds, and what you wanna do is you wanna add them right into your blender. Add your desired amount of chipotle peppers. I'm gonna go with four because we love the flavor and the smell of chipotles. And if you don't want chipotle, you can't handle the spice, that's okay. You can use a little bit of canned hatch chilies. And you're gonna add your garlic, tomatoes, your onions. You can use fresh chicken broth or you can use some hot water, throw in some chicken bouillon like I did and pour it right on in. And to balance the spice in here, I've been using piloncillo, also known as panocha, but if you don't have access to this, you can use a little bit of molasses. And now you wanna blend until smooth. Yeah. And boom, done. Place your burner on a medium high heat. Add your chorizo, onions, and your chicken. This is a drop and go recipe and I hope you love it. Continue cooking your ingredients for another six minutes. Make sure to come and stir periodically. And I'm cooking with beef chorizo today and the smell extruding from this pot is amazing. It's potpourri in my kitchen. One final stir and then you're gonna add your sauce. Add a little piece or a small bay leaf. You know the ones that are cracked and nobody wants to use? Just add a little bit of it. You're gonna give your stew a loving mix. Once your pot reaches a boil, you're going to continue to cook on a medium-low heat for another 10 to 15 minutes. You want to look for the sauce to get nice and thick and make sure to come and stir periodically. My son loves french fries with any kind of stew and to satisfy his hunger, I'm going to make him some french fries and I like to do that while our stew is cooking. Our stew is about done. I'm just going to take these french fries out and salt them and then I'm going to be ready to serve you, my dear. And boom, done. Our beautiful stew is ready. And you get that perfect thickness. Doesn't matter if you're gonna be using bread, rice, tortillas, it's gonna be delicious. I showed you in our pot roast recipe how to make the oregano rice. It's super easy. I'll link the recipe in the description area. And that's what I'm gonna be pairing our recipe today with. And make sure to add enough sauce because you can dip just about everything in there. I'm also gonna be placing a little bit of a salad. I'm gonna need somebody very special to say, uh, buen provecho. Thank you. And I think anything stewy and rice for me right now is just hitting the spot. <laughs> All right, it's here. I love how you said those fries were for the boys. I only got a few. Okay. I left a lot more for them. <laughs> you did. And I'm on 11 days of no soda. Cheer for me, you guys. Ooh, cheers. What are you drinking? <laughs> I'm drinking a wannabe limeade. Nice. With or without sugar? <laughs> no sugar. <laughs> okay. I'm proud of you. Nothing like a hearty stew after shoveling snow with your boys. You guys should look away because I'm gonna go sit with my boys and finish our dinner. I hope that you guys have a lovely evening and enjoy. As always, Cloud and I are wishing you the best. We absolutely adore you. We hope you enjoyed our stew today. And just because we make things differently here doesn't mean that you can't make it comfortable for your home. And on that one, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Adios. Hello and welcome back to Views on the Road. I'm your host, Steph, and today I'm going to show you how to make your favorite steak dinner from your local Mexican restaurant. And to start off, we're going to use your favorite cut of beef. You guys know that I lean more towards Chuck because it's like ribeye's cousin and it's a lot more affordable, but you're going to make it comfortable for your home. You want to season your beef with some black pepper, garlic powder, salt, olive oil, and you want to fully combine your ingredients. And nobody wants a piece of steak that's tough to cut through, so you're going to add baking soda, cornstarch, and you want to combine all your ingredients and make sure that every single piece of your beef is coated. Once you've combined your ingredients, you're going to let this set for 10 to 15 minutes. Place your burner on a medium high heat and drizzle your favorite oil. Once your oil gets nice and hot, you're going to add your onions, 
and your roasted poblano pepper. I have a combination of roasted poblano and Anaheim because my family loves Anaheim peppers. And your garlic. Give that a loving mix and make sure that you're coating all of your ingredients with the delicious olive oil. Sprinkle a little bit of salt. And you just want to continue cooking until your onions are translucent. And if you have a guest that loves the spice, go ahead and add a serrano or a jalapeno. Give or take four to six minutes. Your onions are nice and translucent. And as you can see, my jalapeno needs a little bit uh, more searing. So I'm going to go ahead and place that into my pan. And we're going to get started on cooking our steak. Our burner is still on a medium high heat and we're going to drizzle just a little bit more olive oil. I'm going to heat up our pan for a good minute, minute and a half. Next, you're going to place your beef pieces on your cast iron and you're going to cook it for five to eight minutes. We're going to do five minutes on one side, we're going to flip it, and then the remaining three minutes. Next, you want to flip your steak and your jalapeno. Beautiful. You want to fry your corn tortilla and then you're going to place it in your enchilada sauce. And then you want to add your steak. Last but not least, a little bit of avocado and queso fresco for our beans. And your favorite salsa. And that's what's beautiful about your steak dinner. You get the best of all worlds. I'm going to need somebody very special to say a... Uh... Buen provechito. Thank you. Mmm. Mmm. Is that a Fanta? No, it's not a Fanta. It's a <laughs> fake Fanta, okay? <laughs> I'm not drinking soda till my birthday. And for those of you that are in charge of your kitchen, this is a recipe that you want to make when you're completely stressed out and you've had it with your family. Although my family is really sweet and kind, sometimes I don't want to hear a peep at dinner. And this uh, dinner right here is going to have them hopping from side to side. Uh, from portion to portion here and they're just gonna be absolutely quiet at dinner time and let's not forget those hearty eaters are gonna love you even more so look away because it's gonna get dangerous as always Cloud and I are wishing you the best we absolutely adore you we hope you enjoyed today's dinner and on that one we'll see you guys tomorrow bye adios Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to show you how to make a refreshing peach drink. By the end of this video, each and every one of you is going to know how to work with your peaches and make an on-the-go drink or a super delicious ice treat. And friends, that's going to save you and me a lot of money. Let's get this recipe on the road. You'll need six peaches, one carton of raspberries, six cups of water, half a carton of apple juice concentrate, and your desired amount of ice. Let's start off by cutting our peaches and removing the seed. You'll find that with peaches, the softer, more ripe ones, it'll be easier for you to remove the seed, but those that aren't so ripe, you're gonna have to slice your peaches and help it out a little bit. To your blender, you wanna add your peaches, raspberries, apple concentrate, water, and you want to blend until smooth. And boom, done! Mm -hmm. 
optional but not necessary. You can add a few chopped peaches into your peach drink. And boom, done, amigos. Who's ready for a taste? And here is the mom drink on the go. Now let me show you what I do for the boys. And friends, this is how I like to prep our drinks for whenever we have to run errands, doctor's appointments, those kind of things, uh, because I don't want to be spending money. I don't want to be waiting in the drive-through and I definitely don't want to be getting out to a store whenever I have to run my errands. So I hope this helps you guys even for packing for your lunch. And for our ice treats, also known as bolis, I've been using these little pouches. You can use your Ziploc bags and tie them up, whatever little frozen baggies you have available to you. Those are the ones you want to use. I like these because I can uh, wash them and reuse them. How do you know when to stop filling up the bag? I kind of keep about an inch because whenever I'm sealing it, everything, if I come all the way to the top, it'll just pour out. So I keep about an inch from the top. Got it. I really like these because they're great for not just a icy treat, but also if you're in the car and you know that your kids uh, like to spill and those kind of things. These are really easy. You can actually uh, put a straw right through it and you're all set. For those of you that have sporting events or fiestas, these are great for your agua fresca too. Or just plain water, right? Just plain water. And I'm gonna show you what my kids are currently obsessed with. I am pretty sure it's not only my children, but this is gonna be an instant slushy. We have a frozen slushy cup and what you do is you put this cup in the freezer overnight. And then you start squeezing the juice right here at the bottom. And just keep squishing until you get a nice delicious slushy just like this. And this cup comes with a straw and a spoon. And I'm gonna need somebody very special to say ah. Uh, and I do have a few tips for you. One is have a lot of fun when you're making this recipe. And the other one is use one peach per one cup of water uh, when you're making this recipe. Cause I know that there's a lot of you that are just, you know, empty nesters and that's okay. You can still enjoy this drink. Just don't go too heavy on the raspberry. And if you don't have the fruit juice concentrate, not to worry, you can use a little bit of apple juice and your flavor is just gonna be spectacular. I'm lost for words because I think this is gonna be one of your guys' favorite drinks that we make this year. How do I know? Because my kids have been asking me a lot for this one. All right, friends, it's time for me to cool off because Cloud and I are closer to the sun and it gets very hot up here. Ah, that's so good. It's so smooth. It's very light. It's not overly sweet. And the best part is that you can taste the peach. So it's time for you guys to look away and get your peaches out of here. <laughs> <laughs> and we forgot to tell our friends that for those of you that don't know peaches are on sale they are in season yes i'm so excited i've been waiting for peach season and friends if you need a few more peach recipes there'll be some in the description some right here at the end and let me know how it goes for you because if you're not eating peaches then i don't know what you're doing maybe they're eating apricots <laughs> okay i forgive you i forgive you <laughs> As always, Cloud and I are wishing you the best. We absolutely adore you. We want to thank you for all of your comments over the weekend. Cloud and I got a lot of laughs and you guys, some of you made me cry because you're so sweet and Aww. you guys know I get emotional. So thank you guys for taking the time and on that one, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Adios. Hello and welcome back to Views on the Road. I'm your host Steph and today I'm delighted to show you how to make a birria pot pie. This is a quick and easy recipe. Now let's go over the ingredients. For this delicious recipe, you'll need three to four pounds of ribeye, three to four beef bones, half an onion, four garlic cloves, four bay leaves, three cups of water, and in this bowl I soaked eight guajillo chilies. I removed the stems and the seeds, seven carrots, two to three cubed potatoes, two tablespoons of chicken bouillon, two tablespoons of all-purpose flour, two tablespoons of butter, 
desired amount of cheese. Two boxes of puff pastry. You can also use your pie crust, or if you don't have access to either, you can use these little crescent rolls. And you're gonna need a lot of pot pie little dishes. I found these on Amazon, and Cloud will link that in the description for you. I'm gonna start by slicing our ribeye and chopping it into smaller cubes. If you see a piece of fat, go ahead and trim that off. You don't wanna throw it away. We're gonna place it into our Instant Pot, but nobody wants to eat a fatty piece when they're biting into a pot pie. And you should cut your slices of beef into tiny little slices unless you want a big juicy one, then that's gonna be up to you. To your blender, you wanna add your pre-soaked guajillo chiles, your onion, your garlic, your chicken bouillon, water, and you're gonna blend until smooth. And boom, done. Place your Instant Pot on saute and allow three to four minutes so that it can warm up for us. Add your butter and allow your butter to melt. Once your butter melts, you're gonna add your all-purpose flour and combine that quickly. And what that's gonna do, it's gonna give us a little bit of a thicker sauce for our birria because you know what happens when you do Instant Pot birria. It's nice and runny, doesn't get too thick, but we need it a little bit thicker for our pot pie. After about 15 seconds, you're gonna go ahead and add your blended ingredients. And gently combine, make sure that you scrape any of the roux at the bottom into your broth. The bones are optional for you to add if you want a really rich buttery flavor, but if you don't have access to beef bone, that's okay. You can skip and keep them out. I'm gonna add about three of these bones in here so that we can get a real delicious flavor. Next, I'm gonna add the fattier pieces of our ribeye right at the bottom. Is that the fat that you trimmed off? That's the fat that we trimmed off that still has a lot of beef, so any of this that's left over, it's for your burritos, your tacos, but if you have a family member that likes the fattiness, put it in their pot pie. Next, you're gonna add your cubed pieces of ribeye, your chunky carrots, your bay leaves, and you wanna give that a gentle mix just to make sure that all of your beef is well coated into that delicious sauce. Place the lid over your Instant Pot and seal the deal. Cancel your saute, and next you're gonna pressure cook for 30 minutes. I pre-cooked our potatoes for 12 minutes. What this is gonna allow us to do is to keep the form of the cube in our pot pie. Now I'm just gonna strain the excess water and set it to the side. And once you strain your potatoes, you're gonna add your cubed carrots. These are not cooked. They will cook beautifully in your pot pie. I'm gonna use a little flour to dust over our counter. I definitely suggest you take out your puff pastry 30 minutes prior to using. We have a few minutes left for our birria, so while our birria is being cooked, I'm gonna start rolling out our puff pastry. Everybody's measurement's gonna be slightly different, especially if you're using the little tin ones or if you're using these. Uh, each puff pastry sheet is gonna be good for two pot pies. Now I'm gonna start cutting my puff pastry so that it can shape to our mold. And instead of slicing it right to it, I just go a little bit over, just slightly. I'm gonna divide our pieces of pastry puff with a little bit of wax paper. That way our pieces don't stick together. We don't want them acting like Cloud and I right now. <laughs> and if you're using the crescent rolls, I really like these because not only are they easy, you just have to pinch the center, press it down, and Look. This is for the top, and this is for the bottom. And boom, done. Look at how easy it is. And to adjust, all you gotta do is just trim the outer parts, like this. I'd love to show you the one for the pie crust right now, but it's still thawing out. Uh, maybe next time? Yeah, rain check? You want to sprinkle a little bit of melty cheese at the bottom of your pie dish. And what this is going to do, it's going to create another barrier between uh, the puff pastry and the cheese and the rest of your filling. Our birria is fully cooked. It tastes delicious. I noticed that the roux 
is not really like we want. I need it a little bit thicker than that. So depending on what cut of beef that you use, depending on how much juice poured out of your beef, uh, you might run into something a little bit runnier. But I'm gonna fix that real quick. To a medium hot pan, you wanna add two tablespoons of butter. As soon as your butter melts, you're gonna add two tablespoons of all-purpose flour and quickly combine. Once you combine everything, you're gonna allow it to cook for about 15 seconds. And before I do our next step, you guys know me, I need to switch to a bigger pot. Okay, next you're gonna add three cups of your broth. And you wanna make sure that everything is fully combined. And after two to three minutes, you're gonna notice that your sauce is very nice and thick. That's exactly what we want. Next, you're gonna add your pieces of beef, your pre-cooked potatoes and your carrots. Somebody's gonna say, how dare you? Yeah, I dare. <laughs> I dare you guys to try it, it's gonna be so good. Go ahead and turn your burner off and give this a loving mix. And now it's time to fill our little pies. Super easy. While we're filling our pies, I wanna know, what do you prefer, chicken or beef? I will tell you that I am a beef lover. What about you? Same. Just nice and hearty. And for those of you that don't wanna bake or do anything, now you have a birria stew for your family. This is birria we're talking about. Sprinkle a little bit more cheese so that when you get that first cheese pull from your pot pie, ooh, it's gonna give you the goosies. And now I'm just gonna top our pies with a little bit of cilantro and chopped onion. Next, you're gonna place your little hat over your pie and you're gonna squeeze all around the edges. If you have some of the crust hanging and you wanna be perfect about your pot pie, you can go ahead and trim that off. And then just start pressing all your edges together. Now I'm just gonna fold that over. And this is gonna assure that our puff pastry is nice and sealed because it will puff up and we want it to puff up with that beautiful pie crust. Once you do that, you can leave it like this. It's gonna look beautiful, but you can also form it just a little bit more. Next, you're gonna add a few slits to the top of your pie. And boop, one right in the middle. I'm gonna continue with the remaining and make sure that you have your oven preheated at 400 degrees. And if you're using the one with your crescent rolls, not to worry, you can just, you know, quickly do that. Give it your own design. Probably add another one over here just to balance it. And boop, all set. And you wanna bake in your center or your top rack for 20 to 22 minutes. And boom, done. Our birria pot pies are ready. And if you see this one has a different slit, it's because it's for my goddaughter. She doesn't want any cheese on it. So that's a way you can maneuver yourself at home. Somebody doesn't want beef or cheese or certain things. You can just label it for yourself, making it easy to pick your pot pie. Mmm, it smells so good. I'm going to need somebody very special to say ah. Uh, and for those of you that are familiar with our birria chili oil, if you want that traditional birria taste, you're gonna have to add a few drops of this because it has all the seasoning. And this one right here, I've been brewing for a few months. So it has really good flavor. Boom yum. And a must for this recipe is sprinkle a little bit of lemon or lime as you eat. Thank you. Ooh. So much fun in this pot pie. Mmm. <laughs> Ooh. Look away. <laughs> Look away right now. This is absolutely delicious. The wait, just tell us if the crust is soggy. The crust is not soggy, Cloud. I just have to know that. It is not soggy. It's nice and crispy. Thank you, Queen. I'll even Pull it apart here for you guys. Look at that. Mm -hmm. It's nice and flaky oh, and just, right. let me dip it a little bit. Right. <laughs> mm. I love when you prove me right. Mm. I mean wrong. You know, <laughs> and I really do love cooking for you guys. Mm. Mm. And this recipe is so easy to make that you can prep your birria the day before and then bake it and boom, done. That's how we're going to do it going forward.
Mm. As always, Cloud and I are wishing you the best. We absolutely adore you. And on that one, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Adios. Hello and welcome back to Views on the Road. I'm your host, Steph. And today we're going to be making a chicken and rice casserole with a creamy chili sauce. Uh, we're going to start by taking two cups of basmati rice and we're going to wash it. And I like to wash my rice until my water runs clear. Place your burner on a medium high heat and drizzle a little bit of oil. Add your rice and continue to toast until you get that light golden brown that we all love and you get that scent, that nuttiness from toasting your rice. Mm. Once your rice is nice and toasted, you're gonna add one bay leaf and one teaspoon of ground cumin and you're gonna continue to toast for another 10 to 15 seconds. And you wanna add three and a half cups of water and if you're in a very arid area, you wanna use four cups of water. Add one can of tomato sauce and two tablespoons of tomato chicken bouillon. Give that a loving mix and switch your burner on a low heat. Continue to cook your rice as suggested on your package. For your creamy chili sauce, you'll need eight guajillo chiles, 15 ounces of Mexican crema, one teaspoon of ground cumin, one teaspoon of garlic powder, one teaspoon of Mexican oregano, one tablespoon of tomato chicken bouillon, Take your guajillo chiles and remove any kind of stem that you see and your seeds. And I do want to let you guys know that these chiles are mild. My, both of my children enjoy them very much and they never complain that they're spicy. And if you for some reason get a chile that has mold inside, don't worry, just toss it and get a new one. And if you're wondering what a molded chili looks like, it looks like that it has mold and that green stuff you wanna to toss it. So I'm gonna wash my hands and I'm gonna finish with these chilies and then we're gonna soak them. Add your hot water and allow your chilies to hydrate for about 10 to 15 minutes. By then they should be nice and soft. Once your chilies are nice and soft, you wanna add them to your blender. Add your Mexican crema. If you don't have Mexican crema, you can use heavy whipping cream, ground cumin, garlic powder, Mexican oregano, tomato chicken bouillon, and there's a little bit of cream left in here, so I'm going to add about one-fourth of a cup of warm water. I'm going to shake it up and pour it right back in to our blender. And now you want to blend until smooth. And boom, done! Since we're having a beautiful cloudy day today, Cloud's going to help me shred our rotisserie chicken. If you don't have access to rotisserie chicken, um, I'm sorry. You're going to have to boil at least three to four chicken breasts and start shredding but I don't know if I'm the only one that loves to eat this part no I get. love it too but here's a, a chip with the sauce that you made mm-hmm here you go oh thank you you're welcome how about you come mm -hmm. and help me shred this delicious chicken for our friends and for those of you that don't know my sister cloud and you're new here this is her only cooking channel and um, she does a camerography work for us <laughs> Among other things, but mostly the camera. Here's a piece of breast for you. Thank you. So, do you have any tips for us while we're shredding chicken? Um, tips about what life or the chicken? The chicken. You always shred chicken for me to taste so much better. I would say start off with a big chunk and then just work your way into shredding it like it's string cheese. Okay. To make it look beautiful and even. Ooh. It's because you shred it like our uh, Mexican tias. That's why I like it. Yeah, there's generally nobody in the kitchen when our tias are shredding our chicken. And I think here in the <laughs> States, everybody just puts it in the stand mixer and it and it shreds into just a bunch of little thin ones with no chunk in there. Yeah, you want a little bit of a bite. Those are the good for the taquitos. There they are, right there. Yummy. Thank you so much for helping us. We're going to continue to shred our chicken. Hang tight, friends. Our rice is ready. And let me tell you, this is my family's current favorite way of having our Mexican rice. It's not so traditional, but ooh. You hooked my son on it, so he's asking for this rice. All it has the time. so much flavor. I mean, you're not going to regret it if you try it. And if you do make this, please come back and let us know how much you loved it because I guarantee you will. Unless you don't like ground cumin, then we're going to have to talk about it. And now I'm just going to toast our tortillas because I have some flimsy ones that are cracking up. They're really funny. Look. Yep. All cracked up. So we're just going to toast them a little bit so they don't fall apart in our casserole. We're still going to use them. Hey, this is your Tia Cloud. I'm not kidding. I have dipped everything in this sauce. Chips, <laughs> chicken wing. It is so good. Take your creamy chili sauce and place it at the bottom of your baking dish. 
Next, you're gonna place your tortillas right at the bottom. And if you see, I toasted them just a little bit more. I'm trying to avoid them falling apart, but also being part of the dish. Add a little bit more of your chili cream sauce. And you wanna start making dreams come true by placing your rice right on top of that sauce. Smooth it out really good. And next, you're gonna add a layer of your rotisserie chicken. Add a layer of your cheese. And today we're using Chihuahua cheese, which looks just like this. We've been using it a lot. And whenever you have access to this cheese, this is the one you want to use. And if you don't have Chihuahua cheese, you can use mozzarella cheese or your Mexican cheese blend. They all work. But this one right here is going to bring the flavor. Has a little nutty, buttery taste and goes perfect with all these ingredients. Add some more of your delicious sauce right over the top. And next, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to place our tortillas right over our sauce. I sure hope you have sauce left after I finished about <laughs> half a cup. <laughs> I'll make do. Watch out, friends. Everybody's going to be wanting your sauce. And for the next layer, we're going to add the remaining sauce right over the chicken. And as you can see, Cloud had a lot of this sauce. <laughs> <laughs> and your last layer is going to be your cheese. Bake at 380 degrees and you want to continue baking for 30 to 35 minutes. Not all ovens are created equal. If you see that your cheese is starting to crisp up too much, go ahead and place either a foil or a little parchment paper and we still have seven more minutes to go. And now it's time to serve. Oh my gosh, look at this cheese. Ooh, I want this piece. Oh my goodness, that gets me so excited. <laughs> Who's ready for a delicious bite? And this is how I like to plate it for the boys. You can add a little bit of lettuce on the top and a little sour cream. And I still have a little bit of the salsa I made yesterday, and I'm just going to drizzle a little bit over the top. Enjoy. Thank you. It smells so good. And I'm sold. When it has cheese in it, call me. <laughs> I'll be there. Mmm. <laughs> mmm. Mmm. And just like that, your heart is soothed with a homemade casserole. Don't skip on that lettuce. It really combines all the flavors. And if you so happen to get not just the crispy cheese on the side, but a crispy piece of rice, please leave a comment because I know you and I both are going to love it. Mmm, absolutely delicious. Oh, you guys enjoy watching me eat a casserole? And I enjoy baking them. <laughs> As always, Cloud and I are wishing you the best. We absolutely adore you. We want to thank you all for joining us and reaching our milestone of 1 million subscribers. Uh, we wouldn't have been able to do this without you. Uh, just hang tight for me because I'm still doing a lot of unpacking and organizing, but as soon as all of that is set, you're going to get your gifted recipes. And on that one, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Adios.